My name is Ed Coletti, and as Hospital Chief Executive Officer of Helen Hayes Hospital, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 122nd Annual Helen Hayes Hospital Honors Assembly. We begin today with the singing of the National Anthem from Scott Smith, a staff member of our TRC program, Transitional Rehabilitation Program. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch. We're so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and a home of the Thank you very much, Scott. It's been two years since we've been able to gather together for this special event. And I speak on behalf of all of us at Helen Hayes Hospital when I say how very happy we are to have you here today. We've held the Honors Assembly every year since our founding in 1900, and it holds a very special place, not only in our history, but in our hearts. Originally held as a school graduation ceremony for the hospital's pediatric patients, the Honors Assembly now celebrates our patients' remarkable accomplishments. We're so privileged to recognize the achievements of six incredible honorees today who have inspired us all with their boundless reserves of hope, courage, and perseverance. I'd like to thank our honorees for allowing us to be part of their rehab journeys and for sharing their stories with us today. We will learn of the enormous amount of bravery and fortitude that these individuals have shown as they journeyed along the path of recovery. Seeing past any limitations or obstacles, our honorees have put their faith in their rehabilitation care teams. They truly are a personification of the power of rehabilitation. Thank you as well to all of who have been invaluable support for our honorees, to the family, friends, and caregivers who tirelessly stood by their sides, and to our amazing staff who have dedicated their careers to better the lives of each and every day. Finally, I'd like to express our gratitude to the many friends of the hospital who support our patients and staff, including our Board of Visitors, the New York State Department of Health, and the Helen Hayes Hospital Foundation and Volunteer Corps. I'm pleased to begin our awards presentation. Our first award is Helen Hayes Hospital MacArthur Rose Award, which is presented to a patient whose love of life and caring and concern for others has made a difference in the lives of the hospital's patients and staff. Lori Tillinghast and Kristen Bronson from the hospital's brain injury unit will present this award. We wanted to honor Hala Ghazal, who was unexpectedly unable to attend today's ceremony. We spoke with Hala and she wanted us to extend 
her sincere gratitude for this recognition of her achievements. The Helen Hayes MacArthur Rose Award is presented to a truly special person who not only exhibits remarkable strength in their own recovery, but who shares their strength and friendship with others facing similar challenges. Like our namesake, Helen Hayes MacArthur, Hala has been a beacon of hope and friendship for all that she met at Helen Hayes Hospital, and she is so deserving of this special honor. Hala went to the emergency room on February 13th, 2022, after experiencing severe headaches and vomiting. Her seven-year-old son had begged her to go to the hospital because he was so worried about his mother. Hala has always said he saved her life. After initially being diagnosed with a migraine and discharge, Hala returned to the hospital on her doctor's orders on February 14, 2022, to learn she had suffered an intraventricular hemorrhage and ruptured arterial venous malformation. She required two brain surgeries a week apart, and she underwent these high-risk surgeries while being nine, 19 weeks pregnant with her third child. Following surgery, Hala was left fully paralyzed and with absent sensation on her left side. She arrived at Helen Hayes Hospital in early March and was suffering severe pain in her neck and shoulder. This disrupted her rehabilitation program and caused extreme sleep deprivation. Due to her pregnancy, the medical options for treatment and pain management were limited or contraindicated for the health of her unborn child. Hala endured so much stress, concern, and feeling overwhelmed from the paralysis on her left side, her pregnancy, and missing her two young children, ages four and seven, who were too young to visit the hospital. She was also concerned about the well-being of her husband, who was holding down a job, taking care of two young kids, and visiting her in between. Hala had never been away from her children, and now she could not see them in person for over three months. Sadly, her hospitalization was also during Ramadan, so she was unable to participate in the month-long holiday with her family or be with her children to open gifts at the end. Despite these incredibly difficult physical and emotional challenges, Holly gave 100% in every treatment session to work toward her recovery and achieving her goals. Days of profound sadness were followed by happiness and excitement as Hala recognized her progress, such as moving her left leg for the first time. We watched her baby Brump grow week by week and even provided her with a pregnancy pillow that took up more of the bed than she did. She took her recovery one day at a time, and she never complained about what she was going through. She was determined to work through her disability and be the best mother and wife that she could be. Hala is a religious and spiritual woman who prayed for herself and for everyone around her at Helen Hayes. We were always amazed that she knew the name of every single staff member and every patient that she encountered. She greeted everyone by name. That personal touch made everyone feel special. And she became close friends with many patients during her three month stay here. She was so kind, supportive, and thoughtful. One patient told Hala that she was concerned over her hair loss and the next day, Holly gave her a beautiful silk head covering to make her feel better. Holly received fun socks and Easter candy from other patients who adored her, including Noreen and Tim Coletti, whose story you will hear about later. It was just so clear how much they meant to her and how much she meant to them. Holly worked so hard each and every day and she never gave up despite the challenges that she experienced. On May 19th, she was discharged from Helen Hayes Hospital, requiring only minimal assistance for walking and getting dressed with one hand. 
Paula made sure to keep in touch with the staff after she left. When she was scheduled to give birth, she sent us a message. I am headed into the delivery room. God willing, I will call you and send you pictures once I am finished. There was an atmosphere of nervous energy in the air at Helen Hayes Hospital. All of the staff were concerned for Hala and her baby. We anxiously anticipated her arrival. And on June 21st, Hala gave birth to a beautiful baby girl named Soline. When the news of her safe arrival spread at Helen Hayes Hospital, this fourth floor staff broke out in a large cheer, a loud cheer over this miracle. Every staff member walked around with a smile on our faces and a sense of relief for Hala and her family. Hala sent pictures and wrote, she is such a blessing and I am grateful. Hala, you inspired all of us during your stay at Helen Hayes and you continue to inspire us every day. You became a part of the Helen Hayes Hospital family and you have a special place in our hearts. You are so deserving of the Helen Hayes MacArthur Rose Award. You exemplify everything that Helen Hayes represented. It is such an honor to present this prestigious award to you. We are so proud of you and we extend our congratulations to you. Our next award is the Medal of Independence, which will be awarded to two patients. The award is reserved for patients who have overcome catastrophic disabling dis injury. Our first Medal of Independence will be presented by Katie Greco, Michael Pesner, of our rehabilitation medicine team. Erica was a 32 years old working for New York Medical College in academic support and pursuing her hobby of aerial yoga in her free time when she began not feeling well last summer. She experienced muscle and joint pains and sensory changes when she had arrived at the New York Presbyterian Emergency Room on June 24, 2021. It was determined she was experiencing symptoms of Guillain-Barre syndrome. Erica received a course of immunoglobulin therapy. However, while, NYP, while at NYP, she worsened before she improved. She experienced facial weakness and difficulty breathing at times. Once she was released from the neuro ICU, she arrived at Helen Hayes Hospital to begin her inspiring journey back to independence. Erica was in immense amounts of nerve pain when she arrived. She appeared motivated for therapy, but also seemed nervous and was generally quiet. Her therapy team did not know at that time what we were in for. <laughs> Initially, she had limited strength, required full assistance to sit at the edge of the bed, and needed assistance to roll. We utilized a mechanical lift to get her out of bed, and she was not able to stand or walk at all. Within a week's time, we were able to provide Erica with a power wheelchair to grant her some independence. But she quickly learned that she did not want that to be her main mode of transportation. While Erica celebrated her birthday at rehab, the team began to see her true self, an outgoing, kind, and funny woman with a strong-willed commitment to a strong-willed commitment to herself to get better. By the end of July, Erica had begun standing with the assistance of two people, and by August, with the help of our P&O department, she had begun taking steps. At that time, Erica hit the ground nearly running and began to progress so quickly we had to adjust the braces a few days after we received them to be less restrictive. Erica was participating in high level strengthening activities as we knew her athletic level before the injury and the team wanted to ensure she could return to her prior level of function. She would be agreeable to anything we tried including getting up and down from the floor and jumping in place towards the end of her stay. 
Erica had planned to return home with her mom and stepfather. However, she was content with staying on the first floor of the home at first. We decided we wanted Erica to be able to freely go up and down the stairs up to her apartment, which was on the second story. That became our next rehab goal. With the help of her supportive parents who attended many training sessions, Erica stayed motivated even over the weekends doing exercises and walking the halls. She also participated in locomotor training to enhance her walking abilities. Because of Erica's hard work and determination, she was able to discharge 10 days earlier than expected. She was ready to be home and back with her dog, Saffron. Erica had received a rare diagnosis that was immediately catastrophic and very disabling to her. She initially did not know how she would even return to work, never mind aerial yoga. Despite being understandingly overwhelmed at first, she was willing to put in the work it was going to take to get her life back. She was resilient in pushing through pain, profound weakness, and mental struggles. Erica was able to leave Helen Hayes with only a cane. She did not want a wheelchair and she did not need one. She was able to climb the stairs she needed to be able to sleep in her own apartment and her parents continued to support her in rehab as during the pandemic she struggled to get follow-up PT appointments. Erica is now back and better than ever. She's back to work at, at New York Medical College and back as an aerial instructor, continuously celebrating every game. Erica, your recovery has truly been extraordinary. We're so happy to present you with the Medal of Independence today. I will say is thank you to everyone, Katie and Mike especially, who uh, pushed me to do more than I wanted to. And I know that as soon as they heard of my prior aerial yoga and aerial circus abilities told me that I was not allowed to say I am afraid or no to any PT they threw in me. <laughs> um, and just in general, I think, um, I know towards the last few days that I was here, um, you know, thinking about how to succeed and how to push myself. I just learned that you can't say no. Um, you have to believe that you are capable of getting better and doing uh, more than you thought you were. Um, push past that pain, push past the doubt, and trust that your body will eventually take you where you are. So thank you to everyone on uh, the Neuro Ward. I, you were all wonderful. I see some of you over there. Um, and especially thank you to Katie and Mike uh, and Julio, who I guess is no longer here, right? So they did so great with me. So thank you all. Our second Medal of Independence will be presented by Katie Greco and Kelly Mira from our Rehabilitation Medicine Service. Okay, Kevin was a happy-go-lucky guy, 63 years old, and working for an IT department in Manhattan. He was living with his wife and two stepchildren in Yonkers when he began to experience acute respiratory failure and a COPD exacerbation. When Kevin arrived by ambulance to St. John's Riverside on February 22nd, he was intubated and placed on a ventilator. He was extubated two weeks later on March 8th but still required mechanical assistance for breathing. At that time, Kevin was largely paralyzed in all extremities, and he slowly gained movement back in both his arms while in the acute care hospital. He was likely experiencing symptoms of what is called critical illness polyneuropathy, which can occur in patients who are considered critically ill. 
Kevin recounts speaking with the medical staff at St. John's after he was awakened from the coma he was in while intubated. He often stated how no one there thought he would survive and that he realized how lucky he was to have even woken up. He was finally admitted to Helen Hayes for inpatient rehab on April 6th. When Kevin arrived, he was adamant on being able to get up and walk to the bathroom, which was his initial goal. However, he knew he had a long way to go. During the first few days of therapy, we quickly began to know Kevin's other goals related to his hobbies. He talked about his love for concerts and golfing. He was determined to be out on the golf course by the summer and to attend a concert in, if not May, July. But Kevin had obstacles to overcome. Not only did he have profound weakness and limited strength, but he was significantly deconditioned and would fatigue very quickly. Early on in his rehab course, we were, we were able to provide Kevin with a power wheelchair and we utilized a mechanical lift to get him in and out of bed. We were not sure if he would be able to leave rehab on his feet or if he would be a wheelchair user for a longer period of time than he had initially hoped for. Regardless, Kevin was always laughing. He had an infectious happiness that would set the tone for therapy sessions. Kevin proved to be one of the fastest progressing patients we had ever worked with. He was mentally determined and he pushed himself physically to his limit every day. We began utilizing a tilt table which Kevin enjoyed and was excited about. It made him hungry to be able to stand soon. We started to utilize a transfer board instead of the lift with assistance from his therapist. He worked furiously with occupational therapy to be able to dress himself and groom his long hair. About two weeks after his admission, he stood for the first time and shortly after that, he began taking his first steps. He was always excited to share with his wife how well he was doing. Kevin progressed so quickly that we were able to move up his discharge date. We were able to get him home walking with a walker independently. He was excited to be home with his family in the den with the dogs and continue his rehab to be able to attend the concert. In early June, Kevin reached out to the therapy team to share that he had been golfing and he was able to go to the concert in May. At that point, he was also, as he put it, carrying the cane around, though he no longer needed it. Kevin had been critically disabled with a rapid onset of medical issues. He initially did not know how long he would ever be able to take care of himself. However, once that seemed more feasible, he made it clear to himself and his therapy team that he would be golfing and attending concerts before the end of the summer. He reached that goal. Kevin's personality and passion for his hobbies are what drove the course of his rehab. Not only did he accomplish everything he wanted to, but he did it laughing side by side with the team. Kevin, we are so proud of everything that you have accomplished. Congratulations on receiving the Medal of Independence. <laughs> One more, guys. You got it. Listen, um, I just got to thank these girls and Steve over there too, Karen. You guys did a great job with me. I mean, I couldn't sit up, I couldn't do nothing. And as I said, I'm playing golf now. I've been going to shows. You gave, they gave me my life back. I mean, St. John's Hospital may have saved my life. But these girls right here, Steve and a couple others, you guys gave me my life back. I got like ADD. I can't sit still. I, there's no way in hell that I, I could really go on. Like, I, did, I got all bushy the other day looking at some of the Facebook stuff back when I was in the hospital. It was like, it made me just, it brought a lot of stuff back. I owe you my, I really, I owe you a lot. I mean, it's so appreciated. You guys did a great job. I also got to thank my bosses, uh, Ryan, Chris, and Jeff who kept my job for me and followed, did what I would normally do at that job. It's, it's great. I mean, I got so much support. My wife was unbelievable. She came to the hospital every single day for close to six weeks since ICU at St. John's. We live in Yonkers, so she can only come up here two or three times a week from my rehab. 
I don't, I don't, I just don't know what to say. I just gotta say, you got me all mushy the other day, and now I'm mushy again. And <laughs> I just thank you a hell of a lot, man. You people saved my friggin' life. I mean it. You really did. Thanks again so much. You got enough time. Our next award, the Continuing Care Cup, recognizes an individual who has benefited from ongoing therapies and specialty services and who has exhibited a commitment to continued rehabilitation. The award will be presented by Colleen Gubala from our outpatient neurology department and Milford Edwards from our wellness center. Good afternoon. Richard, this is a long time coming, well deserved. It's our privilege today to present the Continuing Care Cup to Richard Dorian, who is a shining example of perseverance and commitment to rehabilitation and to continuing care. In July of 2017, Richard suffered an acute stroke, which left him with weakness and paralysis on the left side of his body. When he was admitted to inpatient rehabilitation at Helen Hayes, he couldn't move his left arm. His left leg was extremely weak. His standing balance was poor and he needed the assistance of two therapists to walk and for transfers. Despite these challenges, Richard made excellent gains during his inpatient stay. At discharge, a month later, he had progressed to needing only minimal assistance with tasks such as eating and grooming and moderate assistance with more difficult tasks such as dressing and transfers. He was walking 50 feet with a cane and negotiating stairs with assistance. In speech therapy, his muscle weakness was improving and his short-term memory deficits were determined to be mild. After discharge from Helen Hayes, and a subsequent stay for further rehab at Eastern Hosp Easton Hospital, where his daughter works as an OT, Richard returned to Helen Hayes for outpatient therapy. It was October of 2017, and Richard was determined to continue to build upon his hard-won gains. He started outpatient physical therapy and occupational therapy with us and added speech therapy in November. He was also seen by our prosthetics and orthotics department, which fabricated an ankle foot orthosis to help his ambulation. In his several months of outpatient therapy, Richard continued to excel. He was discharged walking with a cane with, and close supervision, progressing well in his efforts to increase his left hand and arm function and correct a shoulder subluxation and able to complete all self-care activities with minimal assistance. Richard knew that he had work, still work to do and was committed to pay, pushing forward. In early of 2019, he began working in the wellness center with our personal trainer, Milford Edwards. Richard was and is incredibly dedicated to his wellness program. He started off utilizing our FES bike and open gym services before transitioning to one-to-one -one training. There we focused on his goals of balance, strength, mobility, especially focusing, focusing on his stroke affected left side. Richard is a very hard worker and was not afraid to face his challenges and take risks to reach his goals. Though he faced several setbacks in the process of his recovery, including a number of readmissions to our inpatient and outpatient services due to colon cancer surgery, COVID, and other hospitalizations, Richard was always ready to get back to work as soon as he was cleared. In fact, after the COVID shutdown, Richard was one of the first ones calling and ready to go once we reopened. Through all the challenges, he continued to push hard through his workouts and was determined to never give up. 
Richard has inspired us all with his motivation to be the best he can be and his ability to show up with a smile every day. So true. It is our honor to work with him and also with his incredible wife, Linda, who is now training together weekly with us and show us the true meaning of love through their endless support of each other. With the unconditional support of his family, Richard will always push to do more, and for this, he is truly deserving of the Continuing Care Award. Richard, it has been a pleasure to work with you, and you are very inspirational. Congratulations. You know, <laughs> I heard a lot of the people speaking today and my thoughts are with them and I can appreciate what they've gone through and it's fantastic I want to tell all you people. But one thing I took away from today and from my treatment up here is the team effort. I've had an excellent team of people working for me. Some are here today, some are not here today. But one of the nicest things that occurs is the actual handoff of knowledge. Like from Colleen to Bojana, which is one of my therapists. I'm here. <laughs> and you're there. I'm here. Oh, there you are. And then to Milford. And then, uh, importantly, <coughs> to my wife, Linda. Yesterday, we celebrated our 52nd anniversary. And so, I got a few gray hairs. <laughs> but you know, I feel, I'm, at, I, I'm 82 years old now. And I had a great life. And what these people are doing to me today is extending that life. And they have a sign in the Wellness Center that says, never give up. And that's what they have to follow. You, you just have to work at it. You can't quit. Because I found out, you know, during the COVID when I really was set back a little while because I couldn't get back up here. I appreciate when I got, got here again I had the ability to start over, and more importantly, I had people who believed in me. And I'm going to tell you one quick story. This was only a few weeks ago. With Colleen. She was doing exercises for me, and I got into the, uh, the room, and I saw they had the stairs there. And the problem was, because of COVID, I wasn't able really to do the stairs a lot. And I said to Colleen, oh, they have stairs here. I wonder if I can try that. And she looked at me and says, hmm, looked at both <laughs> Maybe I need some help with this guy, you know? And I went up the stairs, I come down the stairs. And then I went up the stairs, I came down the stairs. And I looked at her and says, can I do this one more time? And I was so happy because they were there for me and it showed that it can be done. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. But this is what the hospital offers you here. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Ryan Ash. He's Director of Facilities Management at the New York State Department of Health. He will uh, introduce our Frontline Hero Award. Ryan. Thank you, Ed. Good afternoon. On behalf of the New York State Department of Health, it is my privilege 
to join you in recognizing today's extraordinary honorees. The Frontline Hero Award honors those who have dedicated their careers to working on the front lines and fields such as healthcare, the military, or law enforcement. These heroes selflessly serve their communities with bravery, skill, and determination, and they apply the same tireless work ethic to their own recoveries. As a former Marine myself, I'm extremely honored to uh, be part of this presentation. This award will be presented by Aaron Gonzalez from the hospital's outpatient neurology department. I'm going back to work, full duty, and running a Tough Mudder all before a year of my injury. It was the first thing Matthew Bender ever said to me on his evaluation day in November of 2021. I'm going back to work, full duty, and running a Tough Mudder all before a year of my injury. Those are the words I'll never forget my whole career from a heavily tattooed man, proudly wearing United States Marine veteran attire only weeks following a motor motorcycle accident resulting in a below knee amputation of his left leg. At the time of his admissions to Helen Hayes Hospital, Matt was not cleared to bear any weight on his residual left leg as he had undergone multiple surgeries to save that leg. Using only his manual wheelchair, Matt participated in grueling therapy sessions challenging his balance on the right leg, core strengthening, and overall cardiovascular health. Even before he was fitted for a prosthetic, he had specific goals within the year returned to full duty as a Clarkstown police officer, where he served over 25 years, complete a Tough Mudder, a grueling 10 mile, 13 obstacle course. For those who seek out some excitement, such as obstacles including an electric shock gauntlet, buttered up monkey bars, and a frigid cold ice dumpster, a Tough Mudder might be for you. Although he just informed me he was not allowed to participate in the electric parts because of the prosthetic. <laughs> Matt was fitted for a trial prosthetic in November and quickly surpassed the function and use of it, mastering any task before his subsequent therapy. Through trial and use of more prosthetics, each giving Matt progressively more independent function and mobility. A bended knee is not a tra tradition of the Marine Corps, and neither is losing a half a leg from the below knee for this Marine. When not in therapy sessions, Matt continued to progress, rarely taking breaks and eagerly ready to tell me about all his accomplishments while at home. Last December, Matt returned from going on tour with a heavy metal band as a guest performer. His instrument of choice, adorned with a traditional kilt modeling his entirely tattooed right leg and his proud prosthetic, Matt prefers his bagpipe, of course. <laughs> Ironically, his amputated leg is the only limb without ink, which he joked this injury had saved him a lot of money. He has also returned to other passions of fishing, martial arts, and Matt was and is an inspiration in the therapy room, offering words of encouragement to other patients and friendly conversations with therapists and caregivers. He's volunteered to serve as an advocate to other amputees during their own recoveries. In March of 2022, only five months following his accident, Matt returned to work as a full-time, full-duty police officer in Clarkstown. In September, just two weeks ago, he completed that Tough Mudder in Pennsylvania on behalf of two charities close to his heart, supporting veterans and his love of music. The benefactors were the Gary Sinise Foundation, which helps and supports our military veterans, as well as first responders and their families, and the Life by Music charity that helps fund music education throughout the country. And upon this weekend, he's raised over $8,000 for those charities. Matt Bender has served our country and continues to serve and entertain our community despite this life-changing injury. He's the most deserving of recognition for his dedication, work ethic, positive attitude, determination, and achievements. It has been an honor and a pleasure working with you and my privilege to present you with our 2022 Frontline Hero Award. Thank you for allowing me to witness all that you are and thank you for your service. I'm not a real good of these, so it's going to be quick and sweet. 
uh, I couldn't have done any of this without the support of my friends, my family, physical therapist, occupational therapist, in-house physical therapists. I know I was a pain in the ass a lot of the times, telling them, let's do more, let's do more, let's do more, when they told me you gotta pump the brakes a little bit. But uh, I wouldn't be here without them. So thank you all to everybody. Our final and most prestigious award, the Spirit of Achievement Award, is presented to a patient who, despite overwhelming odds, has demonstrated outstanding courage and determination and has excelled in their rehab program. This honoree embodies the spirit of all hospital, all of our hospital, excuse me, and is enormous inspiration for all of us. The award will be presented by uh, Leah Muncy and Tara DeRosa from the Brain Injury Unit. We are so privileged to present the Spirit of Achievement Award today to a man who is the embodiment of hope, courage, and determination in the face of truly overwhelming odds. Timothy Coletti was admitted to Hill and Hayes Hospital in February of 2022 after being hospitalized two months earlier due to COVID-19 with respiratory failure. Tim was ventilator dependent and severely deconditioned when he arrived at Hill and Hayes. When I first met him, he was so thin, almost to the point of being skeletal, with a long gray beard. Every time he moved, it seemed the ventilator would start alarming, and he would struggle and fight against the mechanical rhythm. His condition was so serious that he was discharged back to acute care with medical complications and readmitted to Helen Hayes twice in February. We knew we had to get Tim moving, but initially he could barely move at all without setting off alarms due to dropping oxygen levels. He was completely dependent for activities of daily living and functional transfers due to weakness. His lungs were so damaged that we were told he may never be able to get off the ventilator, but Tim and his wife Noreen were adamant that he could recover. Therapists always ask our patients what their goal is. Tim told us he wanted to get stronger and get out of here as soon as possible. When Tim was initially seen for therapy, he was greatly limited by fatigue, weakness, and difficulty breathing. In addition to being completely dependent for activities of daily living, therapy couldn't address his self-care routine at first because he could not keep his eyes open long enough to attempt anything functional. Tim would only tolerate therapy at bed level. So his therapy focused on the basics to help him regain his strength and preparation for his functional tasks. At first, Tim could not keep his arms up for more than a minute during strengthening tasks without assistance from therapy. He required frequent rest breaks due to his weakness and difficulty breathing. Within a few weeks, we were able to begin sitting at the edge of the bed briefly to build his sitting balance and endurance. Although Tim was greatly limited, you could tell he was always giving 100% effort in therapy. After a few weeks, he more than doubled his sitting tolerance and was able to complete strengthening tasks while sitting up unsupported at the edge of the bed. But every time he moved, the machine still beeped. Tim was impatient to start walking and get home, but it was slow going as his oxygen would drop to dangerous levels with the slightest exertion. He was able to sit on the edge of the bed for about a minute by the beginning of March, then progressed to starting to stand for a few seconds at a time with therapy. Tim wanted to start walking right away, but just to stand for that short time would send the oxygen levels plummeting. However, we were making progress. After Tim gained back some strength back, he was able to begin dressing himself with adaptive equipment. He would get frustrated at times, and he required rest breaks, but he never gave up. Tim began requiring less and less assistance with his activities of daily living with the use of adaptive equipment. Soon, he was able to get himself dressed without his machines beeping and with occasional use of the equipment. Finally, at the end of March, Tim was able to transfer without the mechanical lift and was able to start weaning off the ventilator and spend increasing time on the trait collar. He was able to start wearing the speaking valve that restored his voice and he was able to talk once again, always saying, so what are we doing? Every time I came in the room, he also returned to eating regular meals safe, safely once again after about three weeks of swallow therapy and being allowed only ice chips for some time. 
The discharge was planned for the end of April, and we were trying to get everything in place. There was a big focus on the vent, which he was still using at night, as the doctors were concerned that his lungs just couldn't withstand breathing on their own. Throughout that last month, he just kept making gains, walking first 10 feet, then 15 feet, then up to even 50 feet at a time. By the end, by the time Tim was ready for discharge, he was independent with activities of daily living while seated and needed only supervision touch assist to walk to retrieve his clothing. At discharge, he was able to transfer with touch assist and was walking with a walker up to 60 feet with just two to three liters of oxygen using a nasal cannula, no vent and no trach, as he was decannulated on May 6th, free to breathe on his own once again. Tim always wanted to go further, do more. His wife, Noreen, never gave up on him and was such a positive force in his recovery while maintaining her own full-time job in a healthcare facility. She was instrumental in being supportive of his therapy and providing encouragement. As we neared the last two weeks, Tim began to rapidly improve and his awareness, motivational drive, and understanding of the obstacles he had to overcome really became clear. He put up such a fight, and the more we pushed him, the more he pushed himself to take an active role in what he needed to do to achieve his goals. On May 10th, almost five months after going into the hospital, Tim finally went home. He fought to recover and made a truly amazing recovery. Tim was at Helen Hayes for roughly three months with one or two bumps in the road, and considering the shape he was in entering versus leaving, that is something truly astonishing. Tim pushed himself even when the odds were against him. He got frustrated as anyone would, but always understood why we pushed him the way we did. Between his motivation, occasional stubbornness, and the support he received from his family and friends, it's no surprise he reached the level of independence that he did. Noreen is happy to report that Tim is now home on only two liters of oxygen, likely to be discontinued shortly, and he is stronger than ever. Tim has gained a healthy weight, being 124 pounds in January, and now a whopping 155 pounds, which is major progress, close to his pre-morbid weight of 165 pounds. Tim does all of his exercises every single day, as Noreen explains, and has been promoted from home care to outpatient therapy. Tim and Noreen also reported news that they are being blessed with another grandchild due in February, and we are so happy for them. Tim, your bravery, and tireless determination have inspired each and every one of us. We are overjoyed to see your continuing progress and to present you with the 2022 Spirit of Achievement Award. Congratulations. One more. Good. All right. Ah, boy. Hello, everybody. I just want to thank uh, the wonderful staff at Helen Hayes Hospital, all the doctors, the nurses, respiratory specialists, PT, OT, speech, and recreational therapies, therapists, and their teams. Also those amazing aides that dealt with my every need every day as I needed it. Um, without everyone's hard work, dedication, and compassion, I would not be standing here today. Um, I will never forget all the faces at the hospital, also um, all the support from family and friends and prayers as well. And last but not least, I want to thank my beautiful wife, Noreen, for getting me to this great hospital. Otherwise, I, wouldn't, I don't know what would have happened to me. I didn't make it here. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you all. God bless.
Hi everyone, I'm Maureen, Tim's wife. Thank you. I'm gonna try to say this fast and not cry, but I can't promise anything. Um, this is such a very special day for Tim and myself and our family. I have to thank Helen Hayes very, very much for recognizing Tim's accomplishments today. Tim had to learn how to breathe, how to talk, and how to walk all over again. And with the hard work and dedication of his therapists and their team, he was able to do so and has reached all his goals. When Tim had his speaking valve placed in for the first time, Tara, his wonderful speech therapist, and my second favorite Tara, because my daughter is Tara, uh, she called me so I could see her, hear his first voice for the first time in four months. When he walked for the first time, Leah took a video and sent it to me so I could see him walk for his very first time. This is an example of how the staff went above and beyond what was expected of them. They were just amazing. OT, thank you very much for spending time with him and working on his ADLs. Respiratory staff was always in and out of his room because those bells were always going off and they rectified any problem and they addressed all his needs. The 4B staff just is amazing. Always kind, supportive, and accommodating. The nurse and doctors did, did such a fantastic job of taking care of my husband. Thanks, 4B, for being supportive of me as well. John, you were a great caseworker. I see you out there. Thank you. <laughs> Bobby and Vivian and Carrie, our family that was very supportive. And last but certainly not least, thank you to our wonderful daughter and son-in-law for always being so supportive and helping us during this very challenging time. We look forward to the birth of our new grandchild arriving in February, and we'll have another one to love, so we're very excited about that. Helen Hayes Hospital will always hold a very special place in our hearts. And as it's written on the wall, entering 4B, and I've read it so many times, anyone who doesn't believe in miracles is not a realist. Tim, you're my miracle, and I love you. Thank you, Helen. Please join me in one more round of applause for our honorees. Congratulations to all of our honorees and thank you for giving us this opportunity to celebrate with you and your loved ones today. Thank you for all for coming and please join us for some refreshments as we conclude our ceremony. Thank you again.